we learned a little more about the little prince today, and a little more about where he came from, so I thought this would be a fitting picture for us to draw today. Here we see the little prince on asteroid B612. He's watching the sunset, which he can do a bunch of times, right? Because his planet is so small, all he has to do is move over. So there he is watching the sunset. Maybe he's feeling sad, maybe he's not. We've got a couple volcanoes. We'll learn uh, a little later that he's got some tiny volcanoes on his little planet, asteroid, um, that he takes care of. So there's one there, one there. And we'll also learn later that his planet grows some kinds of things on it. Some are good and some are bad. So I've got one growing here. And, uh, well, you can decide whether you think it's a good, good or a bad one. And let's see, there are a couple things about color that I would like you to notice here. You'll see, we'll talk more about this as we're actually drawing it, but you'll see that I've done some interesting things with shadow. This time, instead of using the black crayon to do shadow, I have used our purple crayon. I've even used purple here on the scarf, which is yellow, because purple and yellow are what? Purple and yellow are complementary colors. They're the ones that are directly across the color wheel from each other. They make each other stand out really well when we use them together. So I've used purple there to make the yellow pop, make look, uh, to make it look even brighter. That's what I mean by pop. Um, yeah, we'll talk about the rest of the shadows as we're drawing. So let's get going, shall we? I'm gonna draw our asteroid. B612. Now you probably know what I'm going to tell you. We're going to start nice and light. This asteroid takes up not a ton of the picture, but a good chunk of it. It's a pretty good size, right? So I'm going to do it the same size right about here. Start out nice and light. And I can go around a few times. I like to do that because somewhere between all of these circles that I'm drawing, <laughs> There's one that's pretty straight, pretty round, I mean, uh, pretty even. So there's my asteroid. And I'm not going to do anything else to it for now. We'll come back to that. We are going to draw the little prints first before we darken any of these lines. So let's get our green. Now his feet are going to be about here, right? His feet are going to be under this brown line. So if I use my finger, go up a little bit. About here is where his leg's gonna be. We don't wanna make him too tall. I'm not gonna put his head up here. I'll make him maybe about this tall. You see that? So a little above this brown line, I'm going to draw my green square for his top part of his body. He's gonna wear the same thing he was wearing last time, so I'm gonna use my yellow to make a belt. Just like we did. And I can go ahead and color that one in. Get my green again, I'm gonna make his pants. Go straight down from the belt. One leg. And then just bring them up together. There we go. All right. So now I can go ahead and start darkening the lines on the outside, filling in that space that's in there. I'm also gonna give him some arms just have his arms down at his sides. They're not doing anything. There he's wearing long sleeves, long pants, so nothing too complicated to draw. Oof, my green is not very sharp. I need to sharpen that. It's not a really a great way to sharpen crayons. So you have to sort of, I don't know, color by the side of it until it goes down, I guess. If you have a way of sharpening crayons, I'd be very curious to know what it is. I usually just end up coloring with sort of flat, <laughs> flat crayons. <clears throat> Sometimes I try to carve it. I use something sharp and sort of try to peel it like an apple. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about right now, is it? All right, so do you have his body down? I've got mine, pretty good. Okay. Um, the next thing that we're going to do, let's get our yellow back, and we're going to add his scarf. 
So I'm just going to add a line just to the top of his green here. Pretty thick line for his scarf. And then remember, it goes off. It's blowing in the wind, right? So I'm going to draw one long line here, like that. And then I'll draw the, another one going right alongside it. I'll make that little V on the, oops, on the end there. Okay, I can color it in. Now I don't know if we've actually drawn a person from the back in this class before. Usually we draw them from the front or from the side, but here, if you'll notice, our little prince does not even have a face. It's just the back of his head. So I started with yellow and then I added some orange over that. So we're going to start with yellow here. And here's what I'm going to do for that. I'm going to start by drawing a circle for his head so that I get the size right. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to do a bunch of tight little spirals for his hair. The book says that he has very curly hair. So I'm just kind of going like this around and around and around. There's his head. Like I said, I'm going to use orange now. I'm just going to add a little bit just to kind of give some shadow in his hair and so that it doesn't look like a giant yellow blob. I'm just going to draw some light little circles in here, even though he's got yellow hair, not orange. But the yellow and orange together makes it look kind of golden, which is what we want. There we go. While I've got my orange, I'm going to go ahead and I'll give him his hands. Just hanging down at his sides. And next, I think we can move back to brown now. We'll finish his shoes. I'm going to do little ovals for the back of his, back of his shoes. <clears throat> All right, now let's work on our asteroid. So I'm going to darken these lines here. Before I go too far, I'm going to think about where I want my volcanoes to be. I want one of them to be on this side and the other one to be on this side. So we'll start with, we'll start with this one since I'm here. And I'm just going to go up a little bit. It does kind of a wiggly line here to show that it's a rocky volcano. And then flat and then down. I'll draw a couple lines going up to it. And a little circle at the top show where the lava comes out of. There we go. There's one. I'll continue drawing around. I can even move my paper like this if I want to. You could do that. Sometimes it's easier to draw curved lines if you move your paper, right? And around and around and around. And here we go for the other volcano. Like I said, I'm going to do, I'm going to go up, across, and down. <clears throat> Draw some lines here, like you would see on the side of a mountain or a volcano. They're just tiny little mountains, aren't they? And there's our asteroid. Oh, I forgot. We talked about a plant, right? So all I'm going to do for that, watch this. I'm going to do it right about here on this side. So almost to the bottom, but not quite. I'm going to draw a straight line starting on the inside and it's going to cross, go out. Not too long. You don't want to make it a giant tree. Mine is even a little too big actually. That's okay. I'm going to add a branch on this side and a branch on that side. And then maybe each branch has another one. Nothing too crazy. I'll just make the bottom of this look nice and thick. Draw a little wavy line to show that it's in soil. And there we go. So here's how I'm going to color in the asteroid. I'm not just going to go zigzag across, right? The way that we color matters because it um, tells our eyes what shape the thing actually is. So here's what I mean by that. This asteroid is round, right? It's a ball. It's a sphere. So think of like a, a basketball. Basketballs aren't exactly the same color all the way around. Some parts look darker and some parts look lighter, depending on where the light's hitting it, where the light is coming from. So we know in our picture 
that the light is over here, right? We're on this side of the asteroid. The light's on the other side. So it's going to be pretty dark back here. So watch this. I'm going to color in these curved lines. You see how I'm sort of coloring in kind of a loose, a loose C shape. See that? Now when I get here, I'm sort of even out. I'm coloring a straight line pretty lightly. And then we're going to start doing C's again, but we're going to do it the other way. You see that? Ooh, ooh, look at that. I was coloring too hard. For this, it's good to use the side of your crayon if you can, not the point. If you had block crayons, I'd be doing this with a block crayon right now. I want it to be a, a smooth, smooth bunch of lines, not harsh. See, this is too harsh. Too sharp. Okay. So you see how those curved lines give it a kind of ball shape? We look at it like a ball because of the curved lines we use to color it in. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit heavier lines on this side just to give it some shadow. See that? I'm going to do a little more over here too. I'm going to color in the volcanoes too. Those are part of the planet, so they got to be the same color as the planet, right? Now if I want, I could even lightly do some lines like this. Make it look like even more of a sphere. There we go. That's good enough for now. Right? I said that we were going to do some interesting things with shadow, so let's go ahead and take out our purple. I used purple here. And I used purple for a couple places, but one of them was to help us see this shadow in even more color. Turns out shadows aren't usually black, right? Shadows are actually usually just darker shades of whatever color the thing is that there's a shadow on, right? So if there's a shadow on a red car, uh, the shadow most likely is just going to look like a darker red than the actual car. So purple isn't a darker brown, but it's kind of close, especially when it mixes with brown. So there we go. There's some shadow on that side. Might do a little bit over here, but not too much. I'll give some shadow to the volcano lines. And to the tree. Do shadow on this side of the tree. Whoops. That's okay. Maybe where the soil line was too. Any dark lines on the asteroid that I want to make stand out, that I want to make more noticeable. I'll add shadow to those. And I'll do this volcano too. You know what I'm going to do? I might even just take my purple and very lightly draw a clean, crisp line around the outside of this asteroid. There we go. <clears throat> okay, let's move up to our little prince. Now, we know that there's light shining on the front of him, right? Because the sun's going to be here. But that means that there's shadow on the back of him, right? Shadow is always across from light. So I'll just kind of follow the outside of his clothes. Think about where there might be some creases in things, some wrinkles maybe. I might even 
didn't do the bottom of his shoes a little bit. Make those stand out. That's pretty good. Do the side of his belt. So we get that nice pop from the purple and yellow. Now here's what I'm going to do. The last thing I'm going to do with this purple right now is the underside of his scarf. I'm just going to very lightly, sorry, not lightly, um, very carefully draw a line at the bottom of the scarf here. And then I'm going to follow this bottom line. I'm just going to trace that line with purple. Now here's something I want you to notice. If you can see, maybe you'll see on your paper too, when I color over yellow with purple, it kind of looks brown, which is because of something very interesting and something I think is super, super cool about complementary colors. Complementary colors can be used to make browns, and you can make, I mean, thousands of different kinds of browns using different kinds of complementary colors. Um, so here we made a kind of brown out of complementary colors, yellow and purple. I think complementary colors are very cool. I hope you do too. So there we go. Got some nice brown shadows because of our complementary colors. All right, now I think we're ready to move on to the outside of this. We got our, our main part and move on to the outside. Let's start by doing our sun. Now I'm gonna take my finger and put it here between the little prints and the volcano, right in the middle of them. And then I'm gonna move it up to about his hand level. And that's where I'm gonna put my sun. See that? I'm just gonna color it in. I used red in this one just to make the sun look a little bit warmer, a little bit more like it's setting. So see how I'm just going to do some curved lines on the outside? I'm not going to color over all of it, just some curved lines on the outside to give it a little bit more texture and color. Now, I'd be interested to hear what you think. Would you have known this was a sunset or could it be a sunrise? I wonder what you think. I chose these colors for the sky because I wanted it to look like nighttime. So it, we know that at sunset, right, sunset is the start of nighttime. The sun goes down and then the sky gets darker. So if we did it just blue, it might look like the sun was coming up. But I did purple in there too. I added purple over the blue so that it would uh, clue us into the fact that it's nighttime. So let's go ahead and we'll just start with our blue. Remember, I'm going to use the side of my crayon as much as I can so that I'm not getting any sharp lines. <clears throat> careful around here because I don't want anything turning green that's not supposed to be green <laughs> like his hair his hair should not be green to the edge of your paper while you're drawing because paper likes to move around while we're working on it. And we gotta hold it still. Otherwise who knows what'll happen. Okay, now here I'm gonna be very careful because I do not want his scarf going green. So I want you to be real careful here too, okay? You see how careful I'm being? Coloring small lines to keep good control. And now that I've got that part, I can go back to my big lines. All right, you see how if with just blue, it could be daytime, All right? Doesn't it look nice and bright in outer space? So I'm gonna use my purple and I'm gonna do the same thing going over purple. Now you see we're getting our nice nighttime colors. 
What a beautiful sunset. I could even use purple to just kind of get a line around here a little bit. I don't want to outline it in purple, but I'm just giving it a crisp line around part of it. Could be okay. Again, I'm going to go back to doing short lines so that I have good control. And once I'm in the clear, I can go back to my big lines. Big lines for big spaces, short lines for short spaces where I want to be careful. friends.